Testament as we do every Monday. We are reading from Kings first. Kings first. Chapter 15 and verse 1. Kings first. Chapter 15 and verse 1. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abi Abizam, became king of Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Maacah, the granddaughter of Abisalom, Absalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. His heart, which was not loyal to the Lord, his God, as was the heart of his father David. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in, Jer in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him and by establishing Jerusalem, because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life except in the matter of Uriah uh, the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now the rest of the acts of Abijam and all the things that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. So Abijam rested with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa, his son, son, his son reigned in his place. David, Solomon, these were the king that reigned in the whole uh, the Israelite as a whole nation but the iniquities of Solomon as he did not ask for wisdom and understanding so that he may keep the words of God but he instead asked for wisdom and understanding so that he may act according to his mission that was for the temple of God to be built and God is going to give you what you ask for so he gave him indeed the necessary things to him for him to complete his mission but that was the end of it because he did not ask as David confirmed with him and said to him and advised him to ask for the understanding and the wisdom for the Lord of, of the Lord of God and because of his sins the great sins that he performed God decided that it was not possible for the 12 tribes of, uh, the, of Israel to be united anymore. And two tribes, Judah and ben Benjamin, were with Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, and the remaining ten, Jeroboam, to Jeroboam, a person that God has selected. But both of them, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, in, at the end they acted foolishly in front of the eyes of God but there's a great difference there uh, there's a great difference between the ten tribes and the two tribes the kingdom of the two tribes uh, g is given because through the grace and because of the name of David because God has given a promise to the man according to his heart to the man that was always according to the word of God and he confirmed with him that they will never stop being a king from your house in the tribe of Judah. Something that indeed happened up until the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ that is, who was the one that sat on the throne of David. And now he's able to reign with God. He is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, but also He is the High Priest as He is interceding for all peoples and for all the saints. But we now come back to, our, to this um, part of the Word of God and we are talking about Jeroboam that did not do good in front of the eyes of God and his son Nebed, the son of Nebed Abizam became the King of Judah. Now Jeroboam reigned for 22 years, Abizam for three. On the 18th year 
of the of King Jeroboam, Abijam reigned, became a king. But the word of God says something that is very important. Even though that Abijam walked in all the sins of his father which he had done before him because his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God as the heart of his father David nevertheless that is in verse 5 for David's sake his grandfather the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him and by establishing Jerusalem because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. At the same time, there's a great war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Both of them, they were drifted away. They have drifted away from the Word of God. And I want us to also uh, visit Chronicles Second, so that we can actually see the story of Abizam that is kind of weird for us, but is absolutely to the point when it comes to the Word of God. Abizam, we are reading from uh, chapter 13. In the 18th year, in verse 1, of King Jeroboam, Abizam became the king of Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. In, immediately there was a war between Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Rehoboam had many more people with him as he had ten tribes. Abizam set the battle, says in... Uh, in uh, and Ab Abiza had l like half the army of Rehoboam. And Rehoboam would be and should be able to destroy Abiza in the, the war between them, the raging war between them. But in that danger, and that's the beautiful message, in within the danger, when you are in danger first, he understood that he's not able to do anything by himself with his own army, his own warriors. Because he had 400,000 choice men. Because even though that was the case, Jeroboam came against him with 800,000 chosen men, mighty men of Allah. And we are talking about 800,000 versus the 400,000 of Abijah, exactly the half of the army of Jeroboam. Of course, he was afraid, but then he decided to use the word of God, hoping to the, to the Lord. In his sin, of course, but in his danger, within the danger, the affliction and the problem, he decided to turn to the Lord. We are talking about a dead end here. We are talking about facing 800,000 with 400,000, just half the army of your opposition. And he hoped upon the Lord. And in front of all, the, of all Israel, he made a shocking uh, testimony, saying, he me Jeroboam and all Israel all the ten tribes that Jeroboam had of course Sh should you not know that the Lord of God Israel gave the dominion of Israel to David forever to him and his sons by a covenant of salt and Jeroboam knows it but he's acting against it but now he find he and, and Nabiza knows that as well. But now he used the word of God, gave the dominion of Israel to David, says forever to him and his sons by a covenant of salt. In other words, a covenant that cannot be undone because the salt is uh, per preserving that covenant. And the word of God also says that you have salt with you in you because if the salt is now uh, not usable thrown away it's if it's not proper then it has to be thrown away because it's not useful even for the earth 
and somewhere else we also know that the word of God says that you are the salt of the earth and people will know that you are mine because of your works and in the New Testament what is the soul that keeps the person alive is the Holy Spirit and the filling up with that spirit <coughs> and as Abiza says that the Lord has created a covenant of salt with the sons of David so that the dominion of Israel can remain theirs forever and it's very important for all of us to understand how important it is as we perform and we have a covenant in front of God through Christ through the Spirit what does it mean for you to have a covenant covenant is something that God is doing with us we accept that covenant and we confirm back and let me give you an example covenant of soul in specific thank you God because it is expedient for us to thank the Lord so that our heart is not in darkness but to be alive instead and we praise you Lord because we need to praise the Lord so that our mindset may not be darkened inside of us we thank you Lord and then we plead with you in the name of Christ help me through the Spirit of course my life to always be in your presence that's the covenant that you make with Christ with God and if you are being baptized in the Spirit as well so that the so that God that knows your weaknesses and the Spirit of God that knows your weaknesses as well will be able to intercede for for you in front of God and God knows what the mindset of the Spirit is and he will continue on giving you blessings and act in your life always in all his power of the Spirit but also in your life he's gonna react as a reply to the covenant that you have started and as a person that has found grace in front of the eyes of God I advise you each and every one of us individually to make a covenant with God a covenant that would include our allegiance with God and then our pleading so that our house may be saved so that may our children may be saved our grandchildren and through the, all of these, through the Spirit, so that God may give us a fruit, great fruit, and for that fruit to remind. But always, we need to never forget that. Always in the name and the glory of God. And Abiza understood it, that God invited David because he found him to be a man according to his heart. And because David is a man according to the heart of God, then God he performed a covenant of salt with God and God promised that there will be no one there will be there will always be uh, the dominion of over Israel will be always David's and his sons and you need to take the decision individually each and every one of us by the decision of death even and decide to go up to the Lord and go individually or even as a household a covenant of salt by the name of of Christ and through the Spirit and it's gonna follow you till the end of the days what God wants you to do is to do to have covenants with him not us saying that if you do this I will do that but instead because you have done so many things in my life I plead with you help me so that I can have fruit and for that fruit to remain for the glory of Christ and the Spirit do you understand what the happiness of the Father will be when he hears you say that do you know how much glory will be given to the Spirit when that is your uh, prayer and how powerful God is going to be in your life because of that prayer now Abiza knows these things 
that there was a covenant of salt with David and God. David with God and God with David, of course. Yet, now we go to verse 6, Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebet, the servant of Solomon. Now we're talking about Abiza now. And he confirms that against Jeroboam, the son of David, rose up and rebelled against his Lord. We're talking about Rehoboam. Then worthless rogues gathered to him and strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and inexperienced and could not withstand them. And now they departed from... And now you think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord, which is in the hands of the son of David. We now know that, it, that what is written in verse 7 is because the word of God and the plan of God was that case. But now Abiza confirms two cases. In sin, a person in sin who remains in sin, but also a person who is in sin but comes back and repents. But Rehoboam did great things. Rather, dreadful things rather creating gods and making them the ones that the people of Israel would worship and he created and made his own uh, priests and everyone came to us they couldn't stand remain to remain there remaining at that place and anyone who wanted to be a Levite from the least of the people would go and will speak and will confirm that he would want to be a, a priest and and Rehoboam would anoint him not God Rehoboam and now he's sowing his own kingdom now but we don't do that we never departed but for us says in verse 10 the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. And the priests who minister to the Lord are the sons of Aaron. And the, pri the Levites attend to their duties. And they burn to the Lord every morning and every evening, burn sacrifices and sweet incense. They also said, the snow bread, the shoy bread, in order on the pure gold table. And the lampstand of gold with its lamp to burn every evening. For we keep the command of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. And these are true words. But he himself is in sin. And I would dare say, the church is following the word of God. I am in sin personally isn't that difficult to understand but God is listening to me because of David and because of the people and because of that church God is listening to me because of my wife because of my children and he's waiting for me to come back and he's waiting for me to repent and this critical point is not for me to come back, but for the people of Israel to come back and re to, to, for them to not be destroyed. Now look, God himself is within us, with us, as our head. That is in verse 12. And remember that. The head of the wife is a husband and the head of the husband is Christ and the question is is it is he B brother have you accepted that your head is your husband wife have you accepted it that's very important have you taken the decision to subdue yourself to your husband as the church to God brother Husband, have you understood and taken that decision of death knowing that your head is Christ? That He is going to reign and He is going to direct your life and your household. And I'm reading this again. Now, look, 
because we do all these things that we've read before in verse 11, even if my own heart is in sin, says Abiza, because we act accordingly to the word of God, because of that, God himself is with us as our head. And his priests, with sounding, with sounding trumpets, to sound the alarm against you. What are the trumpets back then? And what is a trumpet now? It's the glorification, the exaltation. When you exalt God, the enemy is fleeing. When you are praising the Lord with the Spirit, even, He's not able to stand even uh, in any vicinity near you. It's very important and very powerful for you to praise the Lord in tongues through the Spirit, of course, and with faith that the Lord is your head and He is your Lord and your uh, Master. And the result O children of Israel, do not fight against, the, against us because you are truly fighting against the Lord God of your fathers. And that's true. He who meddles and fights against the people of God is like um, taking advantage of God himself, trying to overcome, try to um, afflict God himself. As long as the children of God humble themselves and ask for the help of God and they fear will be turned into hope to God. And let me say this again because this is the most important thing in the life of a Christian. Christ said to the person that he to the person that had his child about to die. I'm going to come and heal it. But people come and say that it's now dead. The child is now dead. Do not do not bother the master anymore. He said to him, do not be afraid. Just believe. In reality, what he said is, do not be afraid, but hope on me. Do not lose your hope. Yes, your child has died, but do not lose your hope. Because blessed is the person that hopes upon the Lord. That is the victorious one. That is a triumphant person underneath every circumstance, under any circumstance, that is filling up the heart of a person with anxiety, stress, and fear. He says, Blessed be the name of the Lord. I am blessing you, O Lord, and exalt you. And he is being baptized with the Spirit. Now, O children of Israel, do not fight against the Lord of God, God of your fathers, for you shall not prosper. You're not fighting against the arms of Judah. You are fighting against the Lord God of your fathers, our fathers. It's very important for you to understand. When you make war, who is against you? Who's on the other side? Is it the master of this earth? You're going to be triumphant if that is the case. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who is making us always be triumphant through Christ. Against you. Who is it standing against you, therefore? There are two occasions. Either you're going to be humbled and you're going to find grace or you're going to boast and you're going to find God against you who's standing against you the fact and the, the answer to the question who's against you it's based upon what you have in your heart if you have a humble spirit if you always ask for God to give you that humble spirit if you have a broken heart if you ask for God to also give you a broken heart, if you're trembling to the Word of God so that Christ may be exalted in your life, are you asking for God to change your heart, to make it like His? Then do not be afraid. Just believe. You're going to be triumphant. And not only in danger, let us not only in danger, but every single day in, of our lives to ask for the Lord to give us a, a spirit of humility and a broken heart so that He may dwell in that heart. And so in that way may find grace 
in front of the eyes of God so that we may not have God against us but with us and for us to tremble the word of God so that we may not sadden the spirit of God with which we have been marked for the day of rapture and especially for him to give us a heart according to his heart so that we may not be forgetful hearers but doers of the word that's the secret of the perfectly blessed person that has understood that the heart of a, of a person is hiding maleficence in it the heart of a person is evil the will of a person is being dra- driven away and is acting through the vision, not faith. If these things are taken in front of God and we plead with Him and we create and make a covenant with Him of salt so that these things may be changed in, my, in our lives, then that person, whatever he will do, will be blessed by the Lord because he is in the household of God become be of in the same house as God become friends with God this is how you become friend with God you understand that you are not able to hope to trust your own uh, mind because the Word of God says that your past and your mindset is not mine and that is why I cannot trust my heart and God is confirming that what you want is not what I want but also he confirms that what I have taken the decision to do uh, it's not what God wants me to do. That is why I say, stop, I need help. And this is when the Lord comes as help in my life through Christ with the power of the Spirit. But that's not enough. As Christ was heard, when with loud vo- with a loud voice and tears, he was praying to God because he was the one who was able to save him from death. He prayed and he was continuously praying and he was heard why because of his prudency and that person is the one who's fearing and trembling the word of god he's not driving to the left or to the right but he's walking straight therefore we need to ask for that trembling of the word of god in our hearts in our lives so that we may act according to the word of god always and because we do not trust our hearts please God give us a heart like your heart that person will be triumphant whatever happens whatever your rival will do will be destroyed why because whoever comes against you to fight you will eventually indeed fight against the Lord in front of you your house your your security will always be Christ that is how Rehoboam with maleficency Jeroboam rather uh, said to himself that I am gonna go ahead and destroy you and I'm gonna divide my men so that you may be surrounded and you won't get away with it and indeed logically there's no way around it do you understand what it comes for you to receive an attack from in front of you and behind you with thousands of men what is Abijah gonna do now what he needs to do he's gonna hope upon the Lord what he has done up until now and when Judah looked around to their surprise, the, blo- the battle line was at both front and rear. They cried out to the Lord. Do you understand what it means for you to cry out to the Lord? Lord, with loud voice. And I want to read it from inside so that we may understand it better. The Word of God says that He, Christ, in the days of His being here down on earth in flesh, the man of God, Jesus Christ, with great and loud voice, He was crying out to the Lord, the one that was able to save Him from death, from the attacks of the enemy. He was heard 
because of his trembling to the word of God he was obedient to the very detail to the word of God that is and the result even though that he was a son he learned from the things that he went through why did God allow these things to happen so that he might be perfect he learned from the things that he went through from his experiences and as he became perfect through it and I'm reading it again as he was a son he learned obedience from the things that he went through and he became perfect because of it and he became a reason for salvation all for all people not just the believers and all the general people but the ones that hoped upon him and he also became a priest how beautiful what beautiful message we receive from the old testament because we know that whatever has been written it was written for our doctrine for our learning so that we may be edified so that we may be corrected and so that we may be done and be per, uh, performing as a triumphant people of God and when Judah looked around they saw that indeed the battle was both front and rear they were in absolute weakness but they cried out to the Lord and the priests sounded the trumpets and they were full in the spirit and then the men of Judah when they heard that voice and the priest of the trumpets and the, and the sound of the trumpets they gave a shout and as the men of Judah shouted and actually they shout out to the Lord and that's the secret is for us to exalt God on Saturday if I'm not mistaken the the youth came and the Lord kept them up standing for two hours no one was stand, sitting down and the Lord was speaking with prophecies with exaltation this is what God is doing and and let me put that even better that's what we want God to do but for God to do this what we need to do is they came couldn't they go around for a walk or something to do to drink something or or eat not seen just for a walk something to do but they came in to the church on Saturday and as they went came up they raised up so that they may pray and start reading the Word of God they didn't they never sat down for two hours exaltation that's the message and as they shouted to the Lord it happened that God struck Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah we in exaltation God is rising up so that he may glorify his own name if you glorify his name he's gonna be glorified if you are personally glorified he's gonna be glorified in your life if you forget about him then he's not able to do anything in your life anymore never forget my dear brethren to always praise the Lord but let me say this once again never forget to always come in front of the throne of God as we are being baptized in the Spirit and there we can praise God not just speak out about our petitions God knows and he knows them even better than you he knows things that you are not aware of that is why when you praise the Word of God when you praise the Lord according to your word you say that by the blood of Christ and the, sp the power of the Spirit the door is open for me to enter the throne of God therefore I am here raise me up and there you're going to experience the presence of God but not with complaints but rather with exaltation not with uh, complaining in your heart and bitterness rather but 
with exaltation? Do you have reasons to praise and exalt the Lord? There's so many indeed. That is what you need to do. Do you have reasons to petition? That's true, but let God do it. Let Christ do that for you. And He's going to intercede for you. Do what God wants you to do. Exalt and praise and thank the Lord. And and every door that is closed will be crushed. And every enemy of yours will be destroyed. Because God is going to do that for you. And I repeat. Blessed is God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is making us always, always being triumphant through Christ. Do you believe that? Always to be triumphant. When? When you enter to the Holy of Holies, blessed in, um, washed in the blood of Christ, fully filled by the Spirit, and for you to exalt them for no other reason. You don't need to uh, say about your petitions, your issues, your problems. God knows. And even more than what you are aware of and know. That is why. What is God saying to us? When you are going to come into the throne of God, you're going to enter, you're going to find, you're going to receive a mercy from God, and you're going to find grace from God for the time of future need. And now we read from uh, verse 16, And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into the hand. Not only they were able to win, but God also delivered them into the, hand of, the hands of Judah. Do you understand what it means for God to deliver you? You deliver the enemy into your hands. You can do whatever you want. Of course, this is the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, the Abizanese people struck them with a great slaughter. So 500,000 choice men of Israel fell, fell slain out of 800. Thus the children of Israel were subdued at that time. And the children of Judah prevailed. Because, why? Because they re relied on the Lord God of their fathers. That's the whole secret. Abiza is in sin. He did accordingly to his father. And he was driven away. But, in the midst of the trouble, he came back, he repented, and he confirmed that we do accordingly to the Word of God. And the most important thing is that he hoped upon the Lord. And as he hoped upon the Lord and he relied on Him, he cried out with great voice. And God delivered his enemy to his hands. And as they were subdued, he was able to slaughter 500,000 out of 800,000 in the New Testament. Of course, we're not going to slaughter anyone. We are saving people now. Why? What's the difference now in the New Testament from the Old? There's only one. The three things, faith, hope, and love. Better of these and the greater of these is love. I am believing in Christ. I am hoping and giving out my life to Christ and God is going to perform grace in me. He's going to give me from His grace. And that grace is going to fill up my heart so that you may be able to do the same for your people, for your neighbors. We don't want the death of the sinner because God does not want the death of the sinner. We want Him to repent and be believe. That's what we want. That's the great difference between the New and the Old Testament, that is. The great difference is one name. Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And the gr even greater difference is the filling up with the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what it means for you, for God rather, to fill up your heart with His own love with his godly divine and fatherly love when you are being baptized in the spirit do you understand what it means for the Lord to transform you from a person who is useless and carnal for you to be transformed to a person that is no longer a forgetful hearer but rather a doer of the work 
so that you may be able to do what is not humanly possible to love God uh, through Christ and the Spirit with all your might, power and spirit and also to love your brother that cannot be done human. it's not humanly possible the same way that God loved you that's not possible I cannot love my children even as God loved me but by the Spirit through the Spirit the love of God is poured out into my heart and I am able to love all my brothers without anyone left out with the love of God as God loved me and how did God love me in my sin you did not choose me but I chose you and I ordered you to go and bring food and fr fruit and for your fruit to remind for that with that love that God loved me with as I'm being baptized with the Spirit I'm now able to love my brothers and not only my brothers but also my enemies and the ones that are hating me and the ones that are speaking badly against me and the ones that are even harming me is that even possible humanly it's impossible but only through the spirit as the love of God is poured out into my heart and then uh, my heart is not filled from the emotional love that people have but rather from the divine fatherly love and what are you becoming then you're becoming a citizen of heaven you're becoming a friend of God blessed be the name of God and Abiza pursued Jeroboam that is in verse 19 and took cities from him Bethel that was the city that was uh, th that one of the gods that um, uh, Jeroboam has set up was um, constructed with its village Jesana with its villages and Ephraim with its village so Jeroboam did not recover strength again in the days of Abiza and the Lord struck him and he died he reigned for another four years and th three years Abiza was in power reigning but Abiza in these three years he did what needed to be done he was able to be triumphant for the tribe of Judah and defeat for the tribe of uh, the tribes of Jeroboam and that is why the Jeroboam was not able to recover and he died eventually whether we want it or not we're gonna die eventually no one can get away from it apart from the ones that are gonna take part in the rapture of the church and if I am ready it's not death it's just sleeping because I'm gonna be found in heaven see if I'm f if I'm taken today I hope if I do accordingly to the Word of God I'm gonna take in the heaven if I find grace in front of the eyes of God but the point is the point is not if I'm gonna die or not the point is if I'm gonna live eternally or not the point is where I'm gonna go after I die and how I'm gonna live as I am alive in this earth that's that's the mystery that's the secret in this life I need to live in the presence of God in the blessing of the Lord and I'm gonna be given the fruit in the name of God God is gonna give me that fruit and if I die is God are the angels or Christ himself gonna lead me to heaven I'm gonna be found in Hades that depends on how you left lived your life and because no one knows what is happening the next day tomorrow today if you heard the voice of God today do not harden your heart today repent today call upon the Lord today exalt the name of God and today thank God with all your might power and spirit with hope that he is your Lord and Savior the one who is able to save you from all these things he is your Lord and your King I mean